Uh, at this time, before I get into the announcements, uh, let's see. Matt, are you in here? Uh, Matt's going to open us with a word of prayer this morning before we start. Come on up, Matt. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, Lord, we come to you with grateful and thankful hearts, Lord, for who you are, Lord, and for what you've done for us, Lord. You loved us so much, Lord. You send us Son Jesus, Lord, and we're thankful for that, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come to this place, Lord, to worship you, a risen Savior, Lord. And um, we just praise you and thank you. And we pray that everything is done here, Lord, will glorify your holy name, Lord. And we glorify you when we walk out these doors. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Matt. Uh, before I start into the announcements, uh, are there any announcements that uh, maybe aren't in the bulletin or uh, have been handed to me? Uh, any announcements from the uh, body? All right. Uh, I do want to remind everybody, uh, uh, the first Sunday meal, uh, we're going to have a celebration for Justin and Kimberly. And uh, it's going to be a basket on the table for cards, et cetera, whatever. And, uh, but that will be during our first uh, Sunday meal. Um, and let's see. We've got uh, Bill Thomas. I think you have uh, uh, announcements, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, uh, I just uh, wanted to make an announcement. I kind of dropped the ball last week when I was in David's position, but uh, I should have updated everybody that uh, uh, not this past week, but the week previous, we had a call of business meeting, and it was voted uh, a concept of what we want to do in terms of the fellowship hall was voted on and approved. And it's being taken to the next level, which involves going back to the engineer and the architect and having some drawings uh, updated. But I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank the three members that served on that Fellowship Hall Expansion Committee, which is Bill Clement, Teresa Hutchins, and Anna Flasco. I want to thank you all for your hard work and your commitment to the project, and I want to wish you luck and uh, thank you for the work that I know that still lies ahead. So that's what I got. All right, thank you, Bill. And I got a little bit ahead. Uh, would you mind coming up and doing the uh, call to worship? Yeah. Thank you, Wilbur. Please stand as we sing hymn number 511, The Solid Rock.
right. Uh, as I asked before, any uh, other announcements? Uh, at this time, I think uh, Kyle and uh, Matt and Bill are going to uh, tell us a little bit about the missions that they've been involved in. Good morning again, church. Um, we just want to share a little uh, testimony about uh, our recent mission trip to uh, Hope for Appalachia, um, which we go into Kentucky, into um, Eastern Kentucky, and we uh, actually go into the public schools and we share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the children in the public schools. Um, I always say every time I go, uh, always um, it's, it's amazing when we show up there and we're allowed to go into the school and they know that the only reason why Matt Johnson's at the school is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when I go in there from the time I walk in the door until the time I leave, the only thing we talk about is Jesus. And, and that is the main point, the only point. Um, the county that we go to um, this past year uh, which I've shared to the church several times, um, was flooded pretty bad. And um, multiple, all of our schools basically, um, I call them our schools because we've been involved with them now for like five or six years, I think, in that county. Um, been in the area for 10 years or so through Hope for Appalachia. Um, the county that we go to is Letcher County, and um, some of the schools were underwater, seven feet of water in the entire schools. Yeah. Um, so. The kids have had a rough, uh, not that they don't have a rough upbringing anyways or living conditions, but the last year has been really tough for the area. Um, one school is actually still, uh, they're sharing, uh, one entire elementary school is sharing a wing of the high school. Mm -hmm. And um, that school uh, was kind of one of my favorite schools to minister to and be a part of. And, um, and now they're at the high school. and. Um, so things were a lot different for us. We just like to go into the gymnasium, have a big party in there, have big music cranking, um, beach balls, just have a blast with the kids and um, show them the, the hope uh, that is in, only in Jesus Christ and um, love on the kids. And um, this year uh, when we went to that high school to see the elementary school kids, we had to stay in their classrooms. And so it was a little bit different for us. Um, but. Uh, we didn't know that God had a bigger plan for us, and by the end of the day, we had almost 400 some kids on the football field, running around playing. Uh, we still we had the generator with us, prepared for music on the football field. Um, so it was just a big party out there, and you could see. So the whole day, these kids were accepting Christ as their Lord and Savior, um, from you know however age to we were uh, fifth, sixth graders uh, that were coming to know Christ. And then at the end of the day, you could see the celebration. And um, I was staying in the middle of the football field, just bawling my eyes up, just praising God uh, for what he had done that day. Amen. And the resource officer, me and Kyle, there's a video we got, and I'm not actually not showing that day, though, but we was in the football field. He was crying with me, of course, Kyle. And, uh, and the resource man was talking about how God had showed up. Amen. And, and it was, I just praise yeah. him, give him all the glory. Yeah. There's one little boy that I led to Christ. He had a, a, a skull necklace on, pretty good size, right here. And, um, and the boy got saved, man. He was, you could see the difference in him. About an hour later, I passed him in the hallway. And I mean, this dude was glowing. I could see him coming out of the hallway. He was a different person, man. I thought, like, man, look at this guy already. God is working on this boy's heart. And then I, I noticed his necklace was gone. I was like, man, where, the skull is gone. Well, he had tucked the skull in his shirt. So when he got to me, I still could kind of tell that he had it on. You know, I saw the rope on it, and he's like, nah, I hit it, man. <clears throat> I was like, man, I tell you what, boy. He said, I said, I got to find you a cross, man. Because, of course, I always wear my cross. The kids, they, they love my cross. I said, man. I'm going to find you a cross. <laughs> well, by the time we were on the football field, guess what? The whole chain, everything was gone. He didn't have nothing on <laughs> And I was like, man, we got to find you a cross. So uh, needless to say, we found one. <laughs> we made a special trip back across town, uh, back to that school to, uh, to let that young man get his yeah. cross. Uh, 
I just praise God. I think y'all, we couldn't do it without you guys. It was 175 missionaries. You got three right here. Marsha's not with us. She came from yeah. this church also. But it was 175 missionaries in Kentucky. Uh, I just give God all the glory. Amen. Well, <clears throat> the first thing I want to say is uh, uh, to Ruckersville uh, Baptist Church. And that's uh, as best I can express my thanks uh, for your support uh, as a congregation, as a church, uh, for Hope for Appalachia. And uh, for me personally, uh, in 2017, uh, six years ago, uh, you know, God used uh, Hope for Appalachia and uh, a member of Ruckersville Baptist Church, and uh, I was his pastor, and he happens to be this guy right here, that uh, began to work on me, God did, and Matt was helping him. <laughs> you know, God's always got his little helpers in there. <clears throat> but uh, that was, uh, it took a couple of years that uh, I uh, started made my, made, started this <laughs> to him and God, and I uh, made my first trip to, uh, to Kentucky uh, for this, this whole program. And along with other things that go on in Lynch, Kentucky, and, and Cumberland, and that area, it's, it's just been uh, uh, such an enhancement uh, to, to my life personally. And it was to me at that time as your pastor, and my testimony to the pastors that I'll tell you what, Hope for Appalachia, changed Ruckersville Baptist Church. The year after we went together, um, there was, instead of two people, there were 14, I believe is the number of people from this congregation that went there. And uh, what a blessing it was to me as their pastor. But again, uh, a, a mission-minded church is as collectively as a church is fulfilling the great commission that says to each and every single, single one of us, go ye into the world. And that's what it does for the church. And, and, and this is the testimonies of what it does with individuals. Uh, it, 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 you know, my, to sum up my trip, uh, it's, it's the same thing I say every year when we're pulling out the parking lot to to come back to, uh, to our homes. And uh, when I got back home, my truck had been 1,590 miles in the total trip. Uh, and uh, so uh, you can do that in about six days or five days, uh, but it's, uh, it's worth it all. But it was the best trip, the best trip that I have ever been on and been involved in. And uh, I want you to know that my involvement has nothing to do with being an ordained minister, a pastor, a former pastor, Reverend Kyle Clements. No, 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 no. No, it does not. Okay? I challenge every person in this church, and there's room. There's room. Mecca trip. Okay? God does some amazing things through our act of obedience, and that's it. God is the equipper, you know. Amen? Amen. Jump on it, Bill. I started going with Matt and Kyle some years ago, and, and I'm a mechanical type guy and do a lot of physical things, but, but God, this year, God challenged me to get out in front of them kids and tell them about Christ. I couldn't put it off anymore. I just, and everything else has been getting in, my, getting in God's way for me to do that. And this year I said, I'm going to do that. And I had the wonderful joy of doing that to many kids and through all these schools. And so that's one part of that I want to talk about. The other part of that, though, is when you look at, we only had, what, 12 people in our team, so we were a little bit short, and the other team that was with us there in, at Redbird, 
we were able to borrow, I'm going to use that adjective, some of their people because God already called some people to work with that team, but they didn't know fully what they were going to get involved in. But they, they came and made themselves available to go out to these kids. We borrowed five people on the first day, and these people gave their, they came there to, to witness. But we borrowed five people, and one of them was a pastor from Spring Hill Baptist Church, and he was kind of lead that subgroup. But they came with us and witnessed to these kids. On, on Thursday, another group of people from another different church came and joined us in, in the ministry work there. But the thing I want to say, when on, on Friday, a lot of these people went off in their ways to get back to home, but we had another group of people that was called there for a specific purpose. The year before, we got locked out of the schools during the day because of a governor's edict that says we can't go in the schools, okay? This one school area took it seriously and we were, they were allowed to go into these schools at night. Well, this year, the school said to them, not only do we want you back in our schools, okay, we want you there, you've got to be there, but this year, can you guys make an extra effort to do something on Saturday? So one guy managed to convince a, bunch of, a couple other churches and some people to come on Thursday night and be ready for, and they came and witnessed on Friday to do stuff in the schools, but they were there Friday night, and they came for the sole purpose of reaching <laughs> parents, our grandparents, and all these people, they came there to do that. And in, in our sharing time on Friday night, there was two different, at least two different church groups there, a pastor from one church group and another pastor from another group, and, and one of the things that came to mind from this was that most of them, have, that's the first mission trip they've ever been on. And God called them there for, for, to witness to people on Saturday. And one of the things that came out of that, that statement Friday night was that may be their first trip, but ain't going to be their last. Yeah. Okay? And so God showed them that they got work to do. And one of the things that, am in, in I getting more involved in trying to preach, not preach, teach some of our kids, because I'm a God's kids, is that you can't go there and just preach there. God puts it on your heart. You can't just do that. There's people in our lives. We've got family members, friends that don't know Christ. Our job is to do that here. Mm -hmm. And I just want to challenge each one of you, if you haven't been on one of these trips, Make the time. Give the time to God. Come to be challenged and, and be a part of that work. Be a part of God's work, and, and you will never be the same. You'll not be able to sit back in a pew and just listen to Brother Mark, who God brought here to help teach us and help us to grow. Just like he says, we're not supposed to. This, our work's outside these walls. It's not here. So anyway, I challenge you, and I hope to have you with us the next time we go. Thank you. I want everybody to know that Ruckus, well, I'll rephrase this. If you have a ministry that you'd like to start or be a part in, uh, Ruckusville Baptist would be, would love to help or help you get started. Or, and uh, we, we've been involved in several ministries. And uh, this is an example of one that just really taken off. All blessings flow started with just a nominal amount. And uh, Ruckersville Baptist came, stepped up to the plate. And uh, not with, uh, only with funds, but uh, with people. So if you have a ministry, please see our ministry uh, council. And uh, we'd love to help. At this time, I'd like to uh, move on to prayer requests. And uh, I'm not going to go over the, the list that's uh, already in your bulletin, but are there any prayer requests? And if there are, if you would stand up and announce them to the uh, congregation. Okay, yes. My son, Marty. Okay. All right. John Underwood's son, Marty, if you haven't heard that uh, 
All right. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like to move on to our scripture reading this morning. Um, it's going to be Romans 6, 20 through 23. Romans 6, 20 through 23. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. I, uh, how about everybody stand while, while we go to prayer? And then uh, after we go to prayer, uh, some of our gentlemen will come and forth for the uh, morning offering. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for allowing us to come here in the freedom to come and worship you. Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, if one has come up these steps this morning and doesn't know you, we certainly pray that uh, they have their hearts, uh, ears open for the Holy Spirit to speak to them. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending uh, our guest speaker this morning, Isaac Strahler. What a blessing it is to have people in our community that will step up to the pulpit. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with our shepherd this morning, Mark. Uh, we do pray that he'll continue to uh, heal and uh, heal quickly. But Heavenly Father, we pray for his spirit. And it's, it's what example it is for such a godly man. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending him to us. Thank you for all the blessings that you've done. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Wilbur. Thank you, Wilbur. Please stand as we sing hymn number 508, Have Faith in God.
learn more about you. God is pulling from you. God is a loved one that I believe of. I always trust in you more always. Thank you for the opportunity to give a small token to the glory of your Father. Father, bless those bless those that aren't here. We ask in Jesus' name we trust. And Robert Johnson. I want to say just a little word about Robert Johnson. He's a magnificent fellow. <laughs> and and his, his, his voice is not too bad either. But we're glad to have him back. I think it's been several years since I've seen Robert. And uh, four years. Well, it's our pleasure to have you back, brother. Well, I just want to say before Kyle starts that I am just happy to be back and see that the church is growing here in Rutgersville and I see a lot of familiar faces and I just love everyone and all the new people that I don't even know. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I mean, my wife and I just love your church and see, she sends her love too and, and we miss everyone. We really do. Yeah. So uh, Barbara asked me last Sunday uh, if uh, I would do the special music, and I said that I would. And uh, Robert calls me during the week and says that uh, he was going to be here for church this Sunday. And uh, so I said, well, that's, that's, that's really good. And then yesterday, <laughs> I talked to Robert, and I said, well, I didn't say anything, but I'm supposed to sing, and uh, would you like to sing? And of course, you got to understand, he's in the car and we have no practice time. But, <laughs> but that never really bothered either one of us, not really. Uh, so this morning, Robert comes in and we, I, I said, you thought about what maybe we would sing? He said, well, I think, I think we should sing your favorite song. Yeah. And of course, you know me, uh, there's a lot of songs my favorite song, but this really is one. And uh, so I said, yeah, I think we can do this. And uh, you know it, you've heard it. And the title of the song is, There is a Fountain. There is a Fountain. Uh, and just uh, listen to the words if you would, okay? <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 
can be dismissed now to go to their uh, children's worship. All right. It's been great this morning. Amen. Well, uh, it's only getting better. <laughs> That's great. All right. It gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce my brother in Christ, Reverend Isaac Strahler. Come on up here, brother. Sometimes he gets to my workshop before I get there. And I love seeing his truck in the parking lot. I know the day is going to start off wonderful. Come on up, brother.
Will you turn your Bibles, uh, if you have them, to uh, John 15? We're going to read a few of these uh, scriptures in your hearing this morning. If you have it, say amen. amen. All right. Verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Then ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I'm in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the what? Vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I'm in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is with, uh, withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are what? Burned. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my what? Disciples. disciples. No wonder y'all go places. Y'all disciples. Amen. No wonder y'all help the children in the church. You are what? Disciples. Verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my Commandments, you shall abide in my, what, love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that, ye, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be, what, full. This is my commandments, that ye love one another, as I have, what, love you. Love you. Why he put that at the end, verse 12? This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. I want to share the word of God with you today. Uh, we, we find that a lot of churches are empty now. We, we, we find that uh, people don't want to fellowship with a lot of people anymore. We, we, we find that... Uh, Things is not going right in this country. And I want to share with you, in the book of Revelation, it does not say it's going to get better. Now, I have studied that book of Revelation. It will make you cry. It will make you cry. And I want to talk to you today about a healthy church fights fair. F-A-I-O. A healthy church fights fair. We, a lot of people is going to come back to the Lord. They're going to come. They, a lot will come and say, what must I do to be saved? But you've been purged. You have been saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb. They're going to come with conflicts. But you might say a healthy church, it doesn't exist. You may say all conflicts, people operating in conflicts, or no conflicts, is in the cemetery. But in the church, we have people that have been purged. We have people that got show much love. We got people in the church that love other people. We got people in the church that will receive people at this church. You know, I came here a couple of times. And Y'all put me in the pulpit last year. Your, your pastor called me last week, or week before last, and asked me to get back in the pulpit. And I thought about it, and I said, well, yeah, I, I can help you, pastor. Because at this church, y'all show much love. At, at this church, 
You got a vision. You got goals set. You got a purpose in life. And you just don't preach the word, but you do the word. I heard you three. All right. Now, then I saw some of you out here, too. I have been out there, and I have seen you minister to others, and that tells me you are fighting fair. Now, there are going to be people coming with their ideas and their own little goals and purpose, but you see, you got the love enough in you, Christ's love, that you will listen, but you will stay focused on the vision that God has for this church. Say amen, church. A healthy church fights fair. Y'all are healthy. You fight fair. The deacon introduced me, and yeah, I get there before he do. He, he in the house had talking to his wife and eating breakfast with his wife. And, you know, I'm an old military sergeant, and I get up early. And uh, I told him one day, I said, uh, look for a huge increase at this church. And I said, y'all going to have to have two services. Now, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Your pastor ain't here. He don't mind me saying that. Y'all going to start having two services. Now, how do you feel about that? Remember now, you got to fight fair. Some people are going to come with their own little ideas and purpose in mind, and, and, but, but you're going to stay focused on your vision. You're going to stay what God has for you is for you for this branch design. Some people want to come and they want you to preach and sing another way, but that's okay too. But you stay focused on what God has for you. I believe a lot of people coming, they went to the world, and the world didn't give them what they was looking for. I believe they lost their peace, they lost their joy, they lost whatever out there, they lost it. Some of them lost their job. But if you know Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, he will provide. I believe a lot of people have went out there in the world, and they did some things. They, again, they lost their peace, they lost their joy, but they failed to realize God provides. God is a God of increase. He increases us. And there's an increase coming this way. A body of people wants to be saved. They have lost, you know, the prodigal son went out there. He said, give me my share. I'm going to leave home and I'm going out there and do what I want to do. He lost everything. Uh, I, I'm going to cut that short because he did a lot of things out there. But then he found himself in the pig pen and the pigs were eating the good food and giving him what was left over. So then, here he come back to the house, of, uh, uh, and his father met him, and the father said, <coughs> give him a rope. Give him a good ring. Are y'all prepared to give a good robe and a ring? You, you give the word of God. This is what we do. We share the word of the Lord because God says, it is my desire that none shall perish. Now, y'all got goals set at this church. That means you are organizing for growth. Two services, you organizing for growth. You want to do something with the fellowship hall, you're, doing, you're organizing for growth. What did I share with the digging? I said, look, be prepared. Now, you've been purged. That means that you are prepared to listen to others and pray for others. You've been, uh, uh, been purged. That means a lot of people coming back to the church, they haven't been purged. That means they took on some things in the world, and that, that way we're going to have to know Jesus deeper than what we already know. We're going to have to get our prayer through like never before because a lot of people is going to be coming back with things they have tried, and it's, it's going to show up in the church, but you're going to have to be strong like never before. Amen. A lot of people want to know what must I do to be saved. Organizing for growth. And that's what y'all been doing as you travel, as you do things, helping uh, uh, Jesus. Because y'all have fed. Y'all have helped Jesus feed the 5,000 over and over and over. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Not only did you help Jesus feed the 5,000, you did more. A healthy church fights fair. 
only place without a conflict is the cemetery. The old people don't argue and fuss, but that's all right too. That, that's all right. They don't argue and fuss and that's Peggy say amen for your husband George. <laughs> they're coming back for love. They're coming back for peace and joy and they're coming back for healing. They're coming back for healing. And we all need healing. We need miracles. And you know those of you that's in this church today and you need healing. There's a miracle with your name on it. God got something for you. You know, I don't think I'm here uh, because I wanted to be here. I think that God told the pastor to send me here today for this, this particular message. Get prepared. God's going to move mightily in your life. And I want to say this. Jesus loved you. He loved you because it says right here, I shared it in verse 12. He loved you mightily. There's nobody like the Lord. He got special things for you and special things for you to do. But you see, what did, how many went with y'all? Three of y'all. Most churches don't have nobody going nowhere. But that's okay too. We ain't going to mess with that. Don't let the world have you. Amen. You know... Uh, in one of these verses here, I'm going to go back and look at one of, the, one of these verses here because I, I, I was looking at some things here. And I think I marked it, and it says, If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. We need peace. We need joy. We need what? Much love. We need much healing and what? Even the body of Christ. Because you see, when you are purged, you provide the sacrifice. You know, we provide the sacrifice. He provides the healing. He provides the healing. He provides the spirit. The word of God, there's power in what? In the word of God. There's power in the word of God. So it tells us here, purge. How many of y'all like to be purged? It don't feel good, does it? You, you, you know, you got to give up something. You got to sacrifice something. You know, you might want to buy a million dollar house, but you end up with a $500,000 house. You sacrifice. And, and, and then you gave <coughs> something extra to the... <laughs> but, but you know... Back when I was a kid, people used to say, I need a little taste. I need a little hit. Now, some of you men know what I'm talking about. Some of you women know what I'm talking about, too. I need a little taste. I need a little hit. Now, what does that mean? You've been to the ABC store now. Come on. Thank you, brother. I only ate four pancakes this morning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thirsty. You know what I mean? I don't know. I only ate four, maybe five. I don't know. I need a little taste. I need a little hit. Not from the ABC store, from back in the refrigerator. This is all right. Thank you. Sacrifice. A healthy church fights fair. Men, women, husbands, wives. How many of y'all fight fair at home? Don't look at each other. Look right up here. <laughs> you look up here. Cause, 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 mm -mm. You got to go home. You roll together, you're going to have to go home together. <laughs> A healthy church fights fair. Husband, wives. Fight fair. Is that all right? Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. So, now, now you, you know, church, sometimes a sacrifice. Sacrifice. How do you feel about sacrifice? Because God is saying, I'm going to purge you. I'm going to take away something that you like. I'm going to take away something that is hindering you and holding you back from doing what I want you to do. Now, 
Y'all going out there, that tells me whatever, you sacrifice. Y'all married, you got children, you, you okay, so that's okay. You're doing the will of God, and they understand the sacrifice, but it takes a lot to give up to do ministry, amen? Now, what, what about you? Are you prepared to do what? Sacrifice. Now, people will come, like I said, I don't want to repeat myself that much, but this is a very important message here today because I believe people coming back to the body of Christ. They are hurting. I was down there in Gordonsville knocking on doors, and people came to the door crying. They needed prayer. They needed prayer. I must have knocked on about 30 doors that Saturday, which was Saturday before last. They needed prayer. Little women need prayer. They need prayer much. They were arthritis, this and that. But, you know, I was there as a servant. I was there as a disciple to just pray. And a lot of times, church, we got to get our prayers through. A sacrifice. What are we planning to sacrifice? And church, now... There was a lot of things I could have done last Saturday, but I thank God that I was prepared to go, willing to go, and I asked God for protection. As I travel going to and fro, Lord, protect me as I go forth. Yes, this is a sacrifice, but you come first. My wife didn't go with me because I, I prefer uh, that she do something else. Because, you know, sometimes when I get out there and start Ministering to people, I might just say, now, come on now. You know you got to stop smoking. Why, why do you think you got lung cancer? Give up the cigarettes. I talk like that. You know, that's my spirit. I, I, I talk like that. Yeah, I talk like that. You, you know, some people ain't got, they don't act like me. They don't talk like me. I go off. <laughs> my wife told me, watch what I say. But, you, you know, one, one thing about it, I ain't going there. <laughs> I, I ain't going there because, for one thing, you know, when Jesus make you, he mold you and shape you, that you do the will of God, amen? And then, you, you, you know, sometimes, you know, I married a wife. You, you know, I married a wife. Somebody say, leave it alone. You provide the spirit, Lord. You provide the fire. You provide the fire. And I provide the sacrifice. Clean me up. Mold me. Shape me. And church, this is what you will be doing as people come. You provide the word of God as they come. You've been purged. You've been molded. You have been shaped. You got children, church. You, all of you in here got just about got some type of ministry going on for the body of Christ. And God is pleased with it because you fight fair. And they ain't going to every church. They come in here because you fight fair. They see the love of God. They see that you've been molded and shaped and called at a time such as this to pray, get a prayer through. And not only that, the love of God is on your face. And right now, there's a special anointing in this place right now. And, I, and what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to ask if you need prayer, why don't you come down here? If you are here and you want to join this branch of design, why don't you come on down here right now? We'll be glad to give you the plan of salvation because the greatest miracle of them all is salvation. If you are here and you want to be saved and you want Jesus to come into your life, why don't you come on down right now and we will give you the plan of salvation. Now, if you are here and, and you want to, now you can come to Jesus. You want to join this church, you, you can come by a letter, you can come by faith, you can come as a watch care member or whatever the case may be, but why don't you come? But if you're here and you need prayer, why don't you come on down and I'll touch and agree with you. Well, our faith, touching and agreeing, well, God will move mountains. Just a little bit of faith, God moves mountains. Will you come? Who needs prayer? If you need prayer. Now, don't worry about your neighbor. Don't, don't, don't worry about your neighbor. Don't, don't worry about your neighbor. Your neighbor's all right. 
And now, I know I need prayer. I need prayer all the time. Because the way people are shooting up these schools and things going on, I need much prayer. I got three, two, I got two grandkids in school. I need prayer all the time. I got a daughter that teaches school. I need prayer all the time to cover them in the blood of the Lamb. And now, come on. Hey, God is able. That there's a miracle here right now with your name on it. And all you got to do is step out on faith. That's a miracle. And I, I tell you what, I even come down, and as you prepare to sing, I believe you got a song lined up. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I, I'm going to pray as y'all sing softly. And our school. 
Uh, she's a school teacher. We just want to pray and ask God to cover you in his blood because there's power in the blood. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as these kids stand in this building, Lord, and the school teachers and others have stood before their children, Lord. They stand in proximity. Father, I ask right now, God, that you cover that school and these children in your blood. No hurt, harm, or danger will come near them. No bullets will be flying near them. Father, we, we say it is done right now. In Jesus' name, take your peace and your joy and we claim the victory right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God some praise and glory. Come on. You know, this row back here, I believe all of y'all know each other. It's two, four, six, eight of y'all. I believe all of y'all worked at NGIC or did something at NGIC. And, and uh, that's all right, government workers. Amen. <laughs> Let us stand as I give the benediction. Lord, send us for, uh, forward from this worship experience with a closer walk with you, God. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's people say, Amen, amen. and Amen. amen. Now, y'all fellowship before you leave.